Am I finally doing this? Yeah, actually, I'm finally doing this. It shouldn't have taken me this long, but there is a reason why it took me so long to get to this. And I'll, well, aside from school and allergies being idiots to me, I. Th there's a reason this season specifically that it took me a while to get around to things. One, it was just the. What? The second season I watched from beginning to end completely. So, I'm kind of, I kind of forgot some of it, and then I forgot more of it for another reason. But, season six, 16? No, 17. 17. Season 17 of Super Sentai, Kosei Sentai Dai Ranger, uh, was never really fully implemented in the Power Rangers. It was the Zords and the White Ranger, or the Kiba Ranger. The White Ranger was a was a brought in to a season two along with some original footage that was made for Mighty More Power Rangers season two. The Dyke and Beasts or the She Beasts or whatever the heck they're called in Die Ranger were the Thunder Zords in a Mighty Morphin season two, and a Ruskin O is the Thunder Megazord, and the White Ranger is the Kiba Ranger. Well, besides that, Die Ranger was never really fully implemented into Power Rangers. Just some nips and pieces of it. At least Kaku Rangers suits were introduced to 100% into Mighty Morphin just as aliens. But that all that's that's for later when I get around to Power Rangers. <laughs> It'll happen, I promise. I just need to rewatch some of them. I'm currently working on in space and Mighty Morphin season one. So the two scenes I've reviewed so far, Jetman and Zoo Ranger, they follow the simple trend that Sentai and Power Ranger for that matter kind of follow. They have different themes and everything between seasons. Jetman was bird themed, all about flying, and it had strong love triangles, very, very developed the uh, heroes and villains and stuff. Zoo Ranger was mystical based. No, it dealt with mystical beings and magic and God and Satan and all this nonsense, but it had some pretty weak characters to it. Die Ranger focuses on uh, Qi and Qi, Chinese mythology. Uh, that's one of the special things about these guys. The Jetman could fly. The Zoo Rangers had special weapons and they couldn't necessarily use magic themselves but they had magic at their disposal to an extent uh the die rangers can use chi attacks like their team attack is like they all shoot a hadouken <laughs> they've been practicing their quarter circle forward punches hadouken that's basically what it looks like it's a it's a, just a big energy ball and it might as well be a Hadouk and that's the first thing I said when I saw it the first time uh, they do have a cannon as like you know the team universal weapon but as like a final team attack it's just Hadouk and I thought that was cool the first time I saw it so before I get into the story which will be pretty badly overdone I mean it'll be very badly explained I can't even explain my explanation very well <laughs> I'm going to talk about the theme the theme itself is out of the three scenes I've reviewed so far this is probably the best theme yet it's very 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 Chinese <laughs> I hope that doesn't somehow sound racist I know people find a way to make it sound racist it's it's very oriental-ish because that's a word it's it's pretty catchy too. That's all I can really say about it. I like it better than Zoo Ranger's theme. Jetman's theme. Yeah, I guess I'll say I like it better than Jetman's. So, the story. I'm. This is gonna be a very bad story overview. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> For those of you that like Die Ranger and love Die Ranger, this is gonna be a very 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 bad. Mostly because, and I'm gonna kind of spoil my thoughts on the season when it 
comes to something I'm not particularly fond of, I seem to forget it fairly easily and or not remember it as well as I should and that's the case for this season so I'm going to I just got finished reading over like story overviews and crap so I can remember things better but as for going into deep thing, deep details like I did with Zoo Ranger and tried to do with Jetman and did with my Digimon ones that's not going to happen this is going to be more brief than the other ones and I'm not going to remember names very well either. And it's another good thing I'm cutting the story down because I'm going to have some rants at the end. So the story starts off with Ryo, because that's the only person's name I remember except for Kiba Ranger, and I'm going to be ranting on his little butt when I get to him. He's in like a, a shop, not a shop, a restaurant. He's like a noodle cooker because that that's a profession. <laughs> <laughs> he's just doing stuff and then he's like being chased by a giant dragon for some reason the dragon ends up picking him up and taking him to this base along with a few other people and this dude named Kaku tells him oh well you have very high chi levels here take these become dire rangers okay the aura changer pretty simple uh, morpher. I mean, it's not like the cross changer, which is the whole thing we just flip over and little bird wings pop out, or the dino buckler, or the power morpher from MMPR that we all know and love. The aura changer is actually you have this one thing, I'm probably doing this backwards, you pull out you know, you pull out like a little circle thing, and then you jam it into the other one. Funny thing is, though, the Aura Changer was used as the morpher for the Magna Defender in Lost Galaxy, which, when I kind of did an overview of Lost Galaxy a while ago, that really caught me off guard, because I wasn't expecting to see something from Die Ranger in the Ginga Man adaptation. <laughs> Gotta make do with what you can, huh? I'm actually kind of surprised they decided to use that, of all things, but that was pretty funny. So, they end up fighting this guy off pretty well. They have staffs. That's like their universal weapon. Like, uh, the Jetman had the bringer swords, and the Zoo Rangers just had the ranger sword and ranger gun. They have, like, bow staffs. And, surprisingly, they're all pretty skilled with them. The five rangers in this team are a Ryu Ranger, which is red, Shishi Ranger, which is green, Tenma Ranger is blue, Kieran Ranger, I think that's how you pronounce it. Kieran Ranger is yellow, and Ho O -Oh Ranger, yes, the bird. She has Ho O. -Oh. She's she's just that cool. Is the pink? Actually, Ho O -Oh is Japanese for phoenix. Eh. So they're fighting this guy. He grows, and then the dragon, Daikin Beast. It's called Ryuskin, I think. Comes down, and it's. I think it's the only. Mecha up to this day, aside from the Shinkenger Origami, that has two forms on its own. Oh, well, then I say that, and then I remember the one tiger, which will be coming up later in the season. <laughs> Oopsies. Never mind. And it has like a human form. You've seen it in Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Season 2. It looks really, really skinny and kind of stupid looking for that matter has like a double ended staff thing I almost punched the camera and it fights this thing off and they win as expected from their first fight so things are kind of just moseying along see I told you this would be a very terrible until a few episodes in when they're faced with this really powerful Goma Goma is the enemy squad of the team the three main ones, I don't remember two of their names, but the main one is Saddam. They're dressed like bondage fetish people. And they're uh, little goonies, like the golems slash putties. I don't remember what they're called in the season, but they look like members of Anonymous. They're wearing like tuxedos, and they've got like these weird 
helmets that are like black across the bottom with like white tops and they have like big pink lips. I don't know either. But the first time I saw them I was like, oh my god, Anonymous. They're gonna hack the Dire Rangers base. And their theme song sounds very, very, very close to the Imperial March. Vader's theme for those two of you that have never heard of Star Wars. It sounds very familiar to the Imperial March. The 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 Goma are weird. I don't particularly like them as much as the Viram or Bandora's gang, but they're there, they're threatening nonetheless. So a very powerful one shows up. He ends up kicking the Dire Rangers butt pretty well until Kaku shows up. And this guy's getting ready to kill Ru Ranger. And then Kaku's like, wait, this is your son here. Shock and surprise everywhere, especially from Ryu Ranger. So apparently, Ryu Ranger's dad was also was, used to be Ryu Ranger at one point, but he ended up like flipping crazy and going over to the Goma. Ryu Ranger ends up killing him in the next episode. And this, early in the season, but there's something that happens a lot later that kind of makes me question this. I don't know if it's necessarily a problem with this instance, but it's a problem with some other instances. So things happen. Things happen. There are some new weapon introductions, like they have like these little disc things. I think this might be introduced a little bit later. But they're like little circles that have a handle on them and they're blades. They can like push them. And then they also get like the bazooka, which is like their final team weapon thing. It shoots a bazooka, Hadouken. <laughs> thing. Hadouken's a pretty decent theme in this season, I'm not gonna lie. So there's a a sword. I'm I'm just gonna skip ahead a ways ahead because this is the next thing I can remember. With like a tiger head on it. It's jammed in a stone and it was told that this thing's gonna be picked up later. A couple episodes later this little annoying brat named Ko, who comes along and finds the sword, picks it up. This thing's name is, I'm just going to call him Baku, because that's what everybody else calls him for short. Baku is the name of the sword. It can talk. He gives him this thing, gives him this thing called the Kiba Changer. He ends up using it to turn into the Kiba Ranger, which is the second sixth hero, and was also Tommy's White Ranger in Mighty Morphin Season 2. And my god, this kid is annoying. He has guts. He runs into Lin, which is the Ho Oh Ranger, and the first thing he does to her is touch her booby. Because apparently the Japanese will let their seven year olds get away with that. Oh, yeah, this guy's a kid, too. He's like six or something. And he pulls a. Uh, what's his name? Turbo Power. Uh. Turbo Blue Ranger thing where he's a kid and he morphs and he like grows or something. I wonder if that's where they got the idea for Turbo Blue's like idea, like his his reason for being who he is was from Kiba Ranger here. But I hate this kid. I really do. He gave a terrible first impression and he didn't change. And apparently this kid's got a backstory too and that's something I'll be talking about a little bit later. He's that makes him even more annoying to an extent for me anyway. He transforms and he uses his powers to like goof around. He's skateboarding in the Kiba Ranger suit using key powers to push up girls skirts like a loser and he, he's he's I don't even know. He made throughout the season I wanted Tommy to come out roundhouse kick him tape his take his Kiba change from him. I was like I'll show you how it's done. <laughs> I I don't like this guy at all, seriously. He's the first, I think to this extent, the only Sentai Ranger that I honestly really dislike from top to bottom. With all four and a half feet of them there is. So, I'm, I'm remembering this arc very badly, I'm sorry guys. He runs into this girl who's basically like the daughter of a rich kind of stuck up mother who pushes her around 
at the same time are introduced to this little snobby kid who's apparently Saddam's son. He's a little brat who's probably about the same age as Ko. Keep that in mind for later. I don't like him either. He's he's a, he's kind of like Bosco from Go Kaiser when I get to Go Kaiser. He's that villain you love to hate. He's just a little nuisance who kind of a rebel against the rest of the Goma themselves. Kind of. And he has it out to find out who the Kiba Ranger is and take the sword for himself because he wanted the sword and then he's Co took it behind his back, basically. He wants the sword for himself, and he wants to use the Kiba Ranger powers himself. So he wants to find out who he is and take it from him. So he basically becomes Ko's rival to an extent throughout the season. What's it down? Hate them both. I want them to kill each other off. So they end up having a few confrontations, but this little brat doesn't know that Ko is the Kiba Ranger for a while. Uh, he ends up making these three monsters. Oh, I knew I forgot an arc already. <laughs> okay, I'll get to that here in a second. He ends up making these three witches. I think these things were used in Mighty Morphin Season 2. And one of them ends up finding who Ko was, and he ends up killing her before... Well, he ends up killing her before he could tell Butterbean over here who he was. So let me backtrack some. Lin is Chinese. Which, like I said, this is a Chinese-themed season to an extent. Uh, Rue Ranger, up to this point, I'm in between the intro arc, the daddy thing, and the Kiba Ranger stuff here. I completely forgot about this arc. Um, is the only one that has a Dagon Beast at this point. So she ends up get telling, gets, te gets teleported to a Chinese desert in this tomb where it shows five beasts, lion, she, she, kitten, screw it. <laughs> the, the, the animals that represent the Daikin beast. And they end up getting their where the heck those little ball things are. That's how they summon the Daikin Beast. They have like these little balls or something that they can use to summon them and control them. They end up getting theirs and they end up getting the beast and they form Ryukano or whatever the heck the Zord is called. Oh man, this is going to be painful to watch later. <laughs> so I'll go back to the Kiba Ranger stuff. Uh... So we find out that Kiba Ranger also has a mecha himself, a Daikin beast of his own. And the only way to summon it is if keep is on this specific day, Kiba Ranger has to morph and call for him. So the Goma know this, so they kidnap Real Ranger and hold him as a sacrifice. They have to bury him up and all of the no, actually this is what happens they have to find where he's buried and then have all of the Dai Rangers come together and call the other Daikin beasts to summon him. So they capture Ryu Ranger to make sure that that doesn't happen. So they go dig him up themselves and try to use their own power to awaken him. And just in time they manage to save Ryu Ranger, summon one tiger, and then forms it with everybody but the Real Rangers mecha to form, I don't know what it's called, <laughs> the, uh, combined, uh, Dire Ranger combined mecha one. I don't, I don't freaking know. I don't know the names of things in this season. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, all that happens. We find out that that little girl is really scrawny loser kid and he finds out that Ko is the Kiva Ranger. Huzzah. So now they know who each other are. So let me explain Ko's backstory a little bit. He's missing his mom. Apparently he's an orphan. And 
his mom way back when like tried like got rid of him, put him up for adoption, but like branded this tiger tattoo on his arm. And this image is replayed shoot a good five or six times like through these first few episodes he's in and it gets really annoying after a while just wait until they actually find his mom that's even more annoying so what is this tiger thing for well there is this one episode where they end up talking to his mom via like hologram or something and he said the tiger's tattoo here is to prevent Goma blood from taking him over because apparently she did it with with a, a Goma and gave birth to Ko here so he has Goma blood in him this wasn't bad until the ending until the end of the season happened and this kind of brought up I don't know if you consider it a plot hole or not but it really bugged me and he's got uh, Goma blood in him and at, when he becomes 10 years old the Goma blood will completely take him over no that's when the sting will run out the Goma blood will take him over but she gave him this tiger marking to hold that blood from taking him over back and the thing's this marking will go away at his 10th birthday and it'll completely take him over, making him evil. So stuff happens, and stuff happens, and stuff happens. I'm blowing over the story. And then we get to the... The Devil's Fist. Two or three parter. There's this fighter who... was actually a the same actor who played uh, what's his face the little kid that grew up into the overlord of the Byram and Jetman crap I forgot that character's name already but it's the same actor just like Ko's mom is the Jetman commander same actress they reused a few actors just like uh, Dan the Tricera Ranger and uh, Geki, the Tyranno Ranger, showed up in Jetman also. So yeah, they they reused a lot of actors here. I don't know if that happens a lot now, but it did back then. And this guy's basically going around killing all the martial artists he finds. He does this thing where he like flips a coin, and he kills them before the coin hits the ground. It's like a a thing he does. So, he ends up running into Ryu Ranger, and Ryu Ranger gets his butt creamed. So, uh, Kaku ends up doing this thing where he puts, like, this spring vest on him to, like, make him stronger. And this thing's, like, cutting his body to pieces. He's bleeding. He's in pain. All this shizwiz is going on to him. And then when he ends up taking the thing off, he ends up becoming... He ends up... He's, like, faster, stronger, more aware, because building your torso makes you more aware for some reason and he ends up beating devil his name devil Jin. yeah he's a Tekken character everybody no he ends up beating Jin. that's the name of this uh, devil's hand guy and then one of the goma guy comes up and he's like here I'll revive you as long as you listen to me and he kicks his butt and he's like I'm not listening to you and just walks off because this guy's a tool <laughs> so now this is so we're about halfway through the season here now we're reaching the second to last arc of the season technically so oh yeah there's something else I gotta talk about too the turtle apparently Radita is a turtle yeah yellow owls actor comes back also and he's like this weirdo that collects turtles he ends up finding this jewel that turns him into a turtle and then back to himself. And this makes him go crazy until um, Kaku tells him that you're the last Daikin beast. You're the turtle. I forgot what his name was. And he's like, oh, okay. And then he turns into the turtle. And this thing basically can revive 
the Daikin beast inside of him, and he's just like a big tank. I mean, he can't get hurt. And the final mech of this season is just stupid because uh, the other, you have Ryusuken, who's the dragon one, and then the other four can hook together to form like this flying uh, jet platform thing that he can stand on. And then Wong Tiger like fits in between, and then they sit on top of the turtle. And what he does is that he spins his javelin thing, and the thing flies. Because there's he's not he's he's not standing his feet aren't hooked to anything he's just standing on a platform and the thing goes up with him and then he just like drops like stops spinning and the whole thing just drops on him that's their finishing attack I liked Ultimate Dice using a lot better thank you very much <laughs> and Angino G12 and Samurai Hao I say this final mecha there's a stupid looking it's just Put the bigger one on the bottom and then just stack them up. It's not even a combination. They're just all standing on the turtle's back. Stupid looking. So that happens. He doesn't form. Well, actually, he, he, he does get a purpose a little bit later. So now we are introduced to one of the things about the season I really question. So they're fighting Adoma, 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 and the night before, Ko sees this dragon thingy flying on the moon, and then like it's coming. Well, what's it exactly? And all of a sudden, when they're fighting him, this big dragon thing comes down and lands on the city and starts blowing things up. This thing, ladies and gentlemen, is Daijin Ryu, or if you want to know him in Power Rangers, Serpentera. It took me forever to figure out what the heck this thing was supposed to be because they never explained what this thing was supposed to be in the season. All they did was tell us who it was and what it was here for. The thing came down to stop the fighting between the Dire Rangers and the Goma because I don't know why. And there's a reason, there's like another complaint about that specifically when I get to the end too. So he ends up coming down, he starts blowing up cities until Kaku talks to the Goma leader and tells him to stop a ceasefire because this thing is blowing everything up. Hijo Rangers, Hijo Goma, because he's blowing everybody out here. That sounded stupid. And they call a ceasefire. Like, okay, we'll stop fighting. And then all of a sudden, Daijin Ryu was like, ooh, peace, flies away. Okay, that was kind of pointless to an extent. While, while, Ko's tattoo starts to run out. His 10th birthday is coming up soon. So that means he's nine, actually. I, thought, I said he was six or seven. This review has become invalid. He's nine. Okay. Told you I don't know this season very well. I just watched it once because I was told it was good. So, he's like, he goes crazy a little bit. He ends up turning evil right before Daijin Ryu attacks. So he ends up kicking the butts of all the Dai Rangers except for Ryu Ranger because he's flying around trying to fight off Daijin Ryu. This thing is giant too, like, here's Ryosuko, or whatever the heck their mech is called, and here is Daijin Ryu. You've seen Serpentera. I don't need to explain it. So he flies away after all that stuff, is whatever. <sighs> Oh, okay, my mom got it before it rang twice. And I lost my train of thought. Thank you, phone. So, they have to find Ko all of a sudden, because now he's like hiding in a cave somewhere. And finding his mom, or get her back from Butterbean, because he's the one that had her hostage. Bef and then uh, Saddam runs into her, and then he's like, oh, this is my husband, 
or my ex-husband. Okay, so this basically means Ko's dad is Saddam. Saddam's son is this old dweeb. That means Ko and this old dweeb are brothers. Okay, this brings up another problem I'll have with the season, and I think I've already addressed the same point uh, before with the whole Ryu Ranger's dad being a Goma thing. So, Baku gets taken in the process. This is, actually, this is after all this. I'll get to that in a second. So they have to hunt him down. They're fighting again, you know, they st after Ryu Ranger beats up Jin again, he comes back and Ryu Ranger kind of beats him up and then he gets shot and killed by a bunch of gangsters or something. That was actually kind of a sad ending for the guy I didn't really like because he was like, okay, flips the coin and he gets shot and the coin falls down and that's it. I was actually kind of depressing to an extent for a guy I didn't like because he was such a douchebag. <laughs> so, he, they end up fighting again because they just got sick of each other. And Daijin Ryu comes back. And instead of blowing up cities, he like hypnotizes everybody. Like he like flashes his eyes and everybody like stops. Okay, so what are you doing? They end up finding Ko inside of a, a rocky cave, because caves are always made of rock. And Ko's mom ends up fixing, you know, doing like fixes the blood, like eliminates the blood from his system or something, so the tattoo's not needed anymore. The little brat ends up finding out that they're brothers, and that's his mom. So the cave starts to collapse. Ko gets out. She gets a rock collapse on her foot. Little dweeb stays behind with her, and the thing caves in, killing both of them. This whole sequence, you hear them, um, Ko, mom, Ko, mom. My like, God, that, that was so annoying. Like, for like every time Ko and his mom found one another, they would just be screaming each other's names at each other, reaching their hands out very dramatically, like a lifetime special. Don't go! Ah, it was irritating to watch. Especially one episode where they screamed at each other like seven or eight times. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of annoying. So when all this is happening, Daishin Ryu like hypnotizes these guys to jump off buildings. Let's go back to blowing up cities or something. That was a little bit more effective. Now you're just being show offish. And Kaku's like, okay, no, you you stay on the building, okay, here's a trampoline or a mattress you guys can land on the street. And then he flies off again. So Baku gets taken, the sword, Kiba Ranger sword, by the Goma. So Kaku's like, you stay there, I'll go get the sword. So he goes up and gets the sword, and Saddam's like, you'll get the sword back under one condition. And this begins the final arc of Dire Ranger. And up to this point, honestly, I was not too impressed with how the season has gone so far. It hasn't really been all that exciting. There's been a few good moments, but nothing too memorable. Like, um, all of the struggles between Red Hawk and Black Condor, or the Dragon Ranger stuff, and the fight between the Tyranno and Dragon Ranger. Something memorable. There hasn't really been something memorable up to this season, up to this point in the season. So now we get introduced to the final arc. Uh, they try to go back to their base, and it's cut off all of a sudden. They get their, they get, the, uh, Kaku comes back and wants to give the sword to Ko. But he's, like, dressed up funny. He's like, give me your Kiba changer and your Rai Rai ball. That's what those things are called, Rai Rai balls. 
And he's like, no, give no, just take some kicks his butt, take some from him. Ko tells the others that he's done that, and they confront him. And he tells them to give their Rai Rai balls and ore changers back, because apparently he was a general of the Goma at some point in time. So he's evil. He's been evil this whole time. Why was he a member of the... Why does, did he help the Dire Rangers? Why did he bring them together? They never said why he left them. They never explained that. And if they did, I missed it. I missed it. If they did. So... They end up trying to fight him off to keep their stuff, and he just mops the floor with them, takes their stuff, and leaves. So now they're powerless to an extent. Now him and Saddam have to fight for the power to become the new Goma leader. While this happens, they have to fight off one of the bondage fetish guys, and they manage to use the power of plot convenience or something, like get emotionally charged and their ore changers and stuff come back to them and they turn into the Dire Ranger again kick his butt, go into turtle smashy mode and land on him he ends up shrinking back and then he like crumples into dirt or something what? Saddam ends up killing Kaku in the fight the Dire Rangers find him Sad day. Uh, they end up finding one of the other of the bondage people <laughs> with finding out that actually this isn't the real person. This is a fake. The real one has been dead since the war that I haven't talked about. It's basically the whole stuff leading up to the season is that there were three tribes the Dai, the Goma, and the humans. The Goma went crazy, the Dai's fought the moth killed the I'm not flipping you people off the dies killed all the goma peace was restored that's that's the pre and the pink ranger was a dude in this war as well keep keep that and I'll let that sink in for a bit <laughs> yeah ho -Oh ranger's predecessor was a dude so there was a pink, a male pink ranger have fun thinking about that for a while And there's like another thing with this. The real version of her shows up with this peacock lady that Shishi Ranger had a lot of things with. And I haven't talked about that because I haven't really, I don't care. Basically it's this peacock who thrives off of Earth's pollution. The stronger, the less pollution there is, the stronger she is. She ends up dying because she lost all of her feathers. These two are really close. Blah. That's all. That's all I'm gonna talk about. For I don't care. And then she ends up turning into mud too. So Saddam tells the leader to turn back into mud. Okay. So why is everybody turning into mud? Ryu Ranger and all them come in and say, "I use my magic. I was the only one that survived that war. I use my magic to bring the entire Goma army back to life in the form of mud puppets." Maybe this final arc will make up for the season's flaws. Oh, this is actually not that bad. Rio Ranger ends up fighting him one on one, stabs him, and then he turns into dirt also. Okay. While Daijin Ryu was blowing the Goma's base up from the outside. Oh boy. Okay. Season ends on a stupid Digimon Zero Two type future look where they're all old guys and their grandsons pick up the stuff because Kaku's ghost talks to him saying nature created these to keep the whole good versus evil balance in check okay that's the end of the story and here's here's my flaws with this season one or here's my issues with the season one there wasn't really much exciting except for the final arc because they end up fighting their master. He kicks her butts, takes her powers away. He gets killed. All this stuff happens. And then it ends up disappointing me with this kind of... The ending, the reason for why everything is the way it is, is okay. It's how they approach it that bugged me. 
And if Saddam had really been the lone survivor, I would have been really, really pleased with how the season ended, but he wasn't. Leaving me with the fact that nature keeps bringing this stuff back a lot, keeps bringing them back to life, and mud creatures to support the whole yin yang thing. I don't, I don't like that explanation. I don't know why. It just bugs me for some reason. And two, if Saddam was a mud creature, how the heck did he reproduce with Ko's mom? She had sex with mud. Is Ko mud? I, I don't even know anymore. Is Rear Ranger's dead mud? No, I think he was just the person who moved over. Was Kaku mud? I don't know why, this, this just bugs me. And then Daijin Ryu. Well, before I move on to that, Ko, I think Tommy handled your suit role better than you did. And I'm going to say the same about Daijin Ryu. I think Serpentera was handled way better than Daijin Ryu. Serpentera was Lord Zed's personal me uh, Megazord. Okay, so, so we know what it is. We know who controls it, so we, it's, we're intimidated by who it is and all this stuff. But Daijin Ryu, all they tell us about him in the season is one, what his name is, and two, what he's there for. That's it. I had to talk to one of my friends who loves Die Ranger to find out that he's really the king of the of the chibis. This actually kind of bugs me because what the freak is wrong with this guy? Why is he attacking his own subsidiaries? That's that's probably not the right word, right right word, but you know what I mean. Whenever he came down, he attacked everything and everything, even the die rangers. Why was what was his purpose? I mean, I think some of these situations could have been could have been fine without him. He just came down to make a normal fight between the, the two sides a lot more Armageddon than it should have been. There was no real reason for him to be here. And if there was, I couldn't find it. He just came down randomly and started blowing crap. And why did it take him like 30 episodes into the season to do it? And then he showed up two more times after that in the span of 20 so odd 19 episodes. Now if this was a recurring theme throughout the season, okay, and then we learn more about him as the season goes along, alright. But the fact that he showed up a little over halfway in and then showed up like recurringly from then on doesn't really make any sense. And what, like I said, what was his reason for being there? Yeah, he came down to stop the fighting, but if nature had created the Goma mud creatures to fight their Die Rangers, why is he coming down to trying to stop it? Isn't he a part of nature too? Because I was reading up on the Dyke and Beast, and they said that they were like spirits of nature that were put into that were put into form to help the Die Clan fight off the Goma. So isn't he technically a nature creature? So why... Why is he trying to stop something nature intended to have happen? I don't know, maybe I'm looking too f far into this. But it's really, it really bugs me. Uh, all in all, Die Ranger, I have two friends who told me that the season was great and I should watch it because I love it. I ended up watching with some pretty high expectations, and I don't know if that's why I don't like this season that much, but I don't like Die Ranger. Out of the five, six seasons that I have watched, this is the only one I honestly do not like whatsoever. I love Jetman, I love Zoo Ranger, I love Goanger, I love Shinkenger, I love Gokaiger, but I don't like Die Ranger. I, I really don't. There's just a lot of things about the season that bug me for some reason. It's boring and has no real exciting moments to it. But then again, this is just me. I know a lot of people who love Die Ranger. I've seen a lot of people who love Die Ranger. So maybe it's just me. 
I would say if you want to watch it and find out for yourself, do it. If you like keeping taking people's judgment as word, then don't. That's all up to you. Now, the reason why this one took so long is because I didn't really want to talk about this season and I didn't remember much from it because I don't want to remember much from the season. But I got it out of the way. It took me a little bit longer to get around to making it and it's taken me a lot longer to finish this 45 minutes. I didn't want it to be like this long. But I had a lot to rant about and I had to remember stuff and put things in order and everything. This was a terrible review. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. But I got it out of the way finally. Hopefully my next one won't come won't take me forever to get the next one out. The next one season I'll be talking about is Engine Sentai Go On which is the Sentai counterpart of Power Rangers RPM. Um, the reason why I'm skipping this far ahead is because most of the seasons I want to watch in between here and there aren't done. Uh, Mega Ranger, Ginga Man, Go Go Five, and Time Ranger, which are in space, Lost Galaxy, Light Speed, and Time Forces counterparts. I want to see them, but they're not f near finished subbed yet. So I'll be doing Engine Sentai Go On your next. Hopefully I'll have that one up next week. I'm not taking two months <laughs> in between reviews this time. And the next one will be better, I promise. <laughs>